As a floor general, the Running Red Hounds captured two 50th district titles and two 13th region titles. Wilson's ability as a passer, scorer, and defender propelled the Red Hounds to two trips to the Rupp Arena in the Sweet 16 tournament. Personally, Wilson accumulated a laundry list of achievements, including 13th Region Player of the Year, third team All-State, 1,000 point club member, and the 13th Region Tournament MVP in his final season. In that same year, Wilson would score 43 points in a four overtime game to propel the Hounds to the 13th Region title in his second trip to Lexington for the state tournament. Wilson played basketball at Alice Lloyd College. His dual threat play style continued at the collegiate level where he recorded 1,300 points and 462 assists, shooting 44% from the field and 72% from the charity strike. Wilson credits Paul Petrosky for his success for investing hours and days in him both on and off the basketball court. Wilson is eternally grateful for the friendship and memories of Petrosky. Wilson devotes his time to golf, pool, fishing, playing music, and traveling. Wilson currently resides in Corbin, where he serves as the head coach of the Lady Red Hounds basketball team. The Red Hound Varsity Club is proud to salute Isaac Wilson for his induction into the Red Hound Varsity Club Hall of Fame. Savior, for without him, uh, none of this would have been possible. Uh, for that, I'll always be grateful, uh, and I'll make sure to continue to give all the glory to him and all my endeavors in life. Also, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame Committee, uh, who saw me as a worthy candidate for such an honor and voted to have me placed in the Corbin Athletic Hall of Fame. I'm truly humbled by this honor, and this will always rank as one of my top individual accomplishments. It'd be a shame if I also forgot to thank my parents. <clears throat> who are responsible for bringing me into this world, and they always told me they were could take me out as well, <laughs> uh, and helping shape me into the man that I've become. Without their discipline, dedication, sacrifice, and love each and every day, I'm most certain that I would not be standing here. Lastly, I'd like to thank each and every coach who was a part of my playing career. Each of you sacrificed time away from your family and dedicated a piece of your life to help push me to be the best player I could be. Speaking of coaches, I would like to give some shout outs to a few coaches in particular who helped me develop the drive and determination that I possess. That not only helped me on the basketball court, but has carried over into my life as well. <clears throat> Growing up, there was a saying that my parents instilled in me at a young age. This saying was a phrase, can't never could do nothing. This statement likely would not pass Miss Pendergraft's class, and I can still hear her making the statement, Isaac, you would butcher the king's language. <laughs> but this statement's always pushed me to levels I thought I never had. <clears throat> I've, never, I've never been the tallest person in the room, but I 100% have always been the most competitive person in the room. This competitiveness started as a child when I was on a constant push to beat my mother in a game of checkers. <laughs> This competitiveness then could be seen at Rossland Grocery, a small country store that my parents owned, where depending on the day, would depend on what vendor was outside playing basketball with me before they had to go to their next stop. I bring these memories up to set the stage for how each coach was able to tap into my competitiveness, and I believe that each of them knew that they could push these buttons at any given moment to get something out of me. First, I want to talk about Coach Paul Petrosky. I stand here today, and without a doubt, I know that this man had the biggest impact on me as an athlete and an individual. I transferred to Corbin my fifth grade year, and many people knew me from the youth leagues uh, and went to Coach P and told Coach P, man, you have a great point guard coming up. Uh, <laughs> I'll never forget this story. And so it was during my sixth grade trial and um, Coach P was reading off the sign-up list. And I have to say that I was very intimidated by my first interactions with this man. But I hear my name called off the sign-up sheet and as I sat in the bleachers at the old middle school. I raised my hand and said, here. Coach P looked up from the sheet and anybody that knows him, he had that very poker-like look on his face. 
And the first words that, that man ever said to me was, I hear you can play a little bit. Who told you this? Your mother? <laughs> he, he may or may not have known what that statement did to me at that moment, but instantly I was on a quest to prove that man that I was talented. Fast forward to my seventh grade year, which was the 0405 season. The high school team had won the regional championship. Coach V tells me that he had tickets to go to the state tournament and that he will be staying in Lexington for the tournament. The next statement he would make would also hit the competitive button inside of me as a young seventh grader. Petrosky tells me, this is the only way you'll ever make it to the state tournament. <laughs> and as I reflect back on these statements, I can say that this man knew exactly how to make me tick. <clears throat> that would set the stage for my high, high school career where I was constantly on the grind to prove that man wrong and make sure that our team went to Rupp Arena because we earned it, not because he had to pay for our ticket. <laughs> Secondly, I'd like to talk about Coach John Crawford. Coach Crawford had an aura about him that's it's really hard to explain. But I can tell you that as a seventh grader, if he would have told me to run through that wall over there, I would have. To this day, I still have those feelings about that man, and I thank him for the way that he approached his basketball teams in middle school and the competitive spirit he brought to us to help mold us into athletes. When I was a junior, I had the honor of being coached by Coach Crawford again as he came up and joined the high school staff. To put into perspective who Coach Crawford was, he had just had hip surgery and couldn't get around without a cane. He walked gingerly and was trying to heal from his surgery so he would be ready for the upcoming golf season. So he comes to practice where we were going through the motions and not practicing to the caliber like a team like that we had should have been practicing that. Remember that Coach Crawford had limped around for quite some time <clears throat> and was not up to his usual self. The whistle, ball, uh, the whistle blows and the ball was rolling toward Coach Crawford. And don't forget all the coaches was upset uh, at us and our approach to practice that day. Coach Crawford <coughs> throws his cane. He didn't drop it, he throws it. Uh, <clears throat> bends down, picks up the basketball, and drop kicks the ball <laughs> into the stands. That Corbin Redhound team would go on to win 26 of the next 27 games and win the 13th region title and make a trip to Rupp Arena. I lay that incredible streak solely on Coach Crawford as those players did not want to disappoint that man another time for the remainder of the season or ever again. Lastly, I'd like to talk about Coach Tony Petrosky. <laughs> Coach Petrosky's always been great at getting the most out of his teams and individuals that maybe others had no faith in. If I had a penny for every time that I had heard the words, you are too small, I would undoubtedly be a millionaire. If Coach P was like all those other people, I would not be standing here because I would have never played. Coach P had faith in me from day one walking into the high school, and I can still say this day, I've never heard that man tell me, Isaac, you're too small. During my freshman year, we were playing Knox Central on the road in a hostile environment. As we all know, uh, there's no love to be shared between the two schools. Uh, and Coach P made sure to tell us all that week that, um, you know, obviously that rivalry went back to when he was a player as well. Uh, I was at the free throw line, or I found myself at the free throw line late in that game. Uh, and I remember that I missed both free throws. And we went on to lose the game 75 to 72. The weight of the world was on me uh, in the locker room after the game. I felt that I'd not only let my teammates down, but I knew that I'd let Coach P down for sure. The first words I remember coming out of his mouth as we walked in the locker room was, Isaac, get your head up. Those free throws did not lose that game. <clears throat> Though those words did not mean much to me at the time because we had just lost, his display of confidence in me as a player after I had failed helped propel me even further in wanting to please the man that I called Coach. Moving forward, Coach P and myself would hand the Panthers a few big-time losses. The most, memorable, <laughs> the most memorable one for me would be during my sophomore year in the 2008 regional tournament that was hosted at Knox Central. Following that heartbreak to losing to Knox Central, I found myself in the 07 regional tournament that was held at Corbin High School to end my freshman year. We were playing Pineville. <laughs> I have to have the mic for this one because this is great. We were playing Pineville, who uh, 
was led by a great upperclassman uh, in Strange and Day. And it was late in that game. We was up by two. I remember this like it was yesterday. And Coach P had called a timeout. And in the timeout, Coach P says, he looks me dead in the eyes and says, Isaac, we're going to run double two. Do not throw it if it's not there. It's like, okay. And those of you that don't know what double two is, it's a backdoor play that I am convinced Josh Crawford scored a thousand points alone on in his career. And he's in the Hall of Fame as well. <laughs> anyway, I'm a freshman. I come out of the timeout and they throw me the ball. I dribble to the left elbow as I've done my every day in practice. I make my usual spin, bam, throw it right out of bounds. <laughs> I'm convinced that the good Lord like confused him in that moment to not get me subbed out um, because I think that the next play that happened after that kind of sums me up my career here. Uh, <clears throat> let me get to it. Uh, the very next play that occurred I believe sums up my career as Pine would throw the ball in. Their point guard was coming up. I just happened to see him bobble it a little bit. This was literally the very next play. I ended up stealing it. <laughs> we both fell down. I run and get it, shoot a layup, and we end up obviously winning late in that game. But I'm pretty sure Coach P was quoted in the newspaper. It was the newspaper, the Radio 1, saying they never wanted to kill a kid and then almost instantly want to turn right around and hug him. To the athletes that I see in attendance today, I want to give you some advice to ponder on as you continue your journey uh, of athletics <clears throat> and into life. I'm able to stand here today and be recognized with this great honor because I didn't allow what other people's thoughts or opinions of me, I did not let that become my truth or my story. I was able to be a player, <clears throat> sorry, I was able to be the player that I was because of my heart and my desire to prove others wrong. My size had nothing to do with my heart. So I'm going to leave you with three points. The first, it doesn't matter how you start, it matters how you finish. Two, again to the athletes, is your attitude worth someone else catching? And if it's, if it's not, do you need to reevaluate re how you are approaching the game or whatever it is? Do you need to reevaluate your attitude? And last, I'm going to leave you with this. It's a Mark Twain quote. It doesn't matter the size of the dog in the fight, rather the size of the fight in the dog. Thank you all.